The Mars Hydro FCE 3000 is an adjustable LED bar grow light designed for 3x3 coverage. It's the smallest fixture in the FCE product line. Mars Hydro makes two lines of LED bar fixtures, the FC series and the FCE series. I've tested almost all of them. Although the FCE series have a lower cost, in my testing, they've performed as well or better than the FC series. We'll see if that's the case with the FCE 3000. Hello, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide. I run the Mars Hydro FCE 3000 through four PAR and EPAR tests at different heights in a 3x3 space. I'll review the maps and analyze the performance, and I'll compare the FCE 3000 to the test I ran with the FC 3000. If you're in the market for a 3x3 light, you'll want to consider the FCE 3000. And if you're watching during the live premiere, you could win it for free. I give away the fixtures that I test during my live premieres on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and tune into the live premieres for your chance to win. The Mars Hydro FCE 3000 arrived in a compact box. Like the other FCE series fixtures, it comes disassembled. This really saves on shipping, and it only takes a minute to put together. I'll set aside the manual, and we can check out the LED bars. You can see how the diodes are concentrated towards the ends of the bars. This helps spread more light to the edges. You can also adjust the bar positions along the frame. Below the bars, we'll find the rest of the fixture. First, we got a hanging kit, the assembly hardware, and brackets if you want to mount the driver to the fixture. Here are the frame pieces. I'll show you how it all comes together in a second. I'll grab the driver and the power cord here. The driver is labeled as Mars Hydro. It appears to be manufactured by LG LED Solutions. I'll lay it all out. Let's take a look at what we got. Here's the Mars Hydro driver. The dimming box is on the right. The power cord, and then the octopus cable, which connects to all the bars. Here are all of the accessories to assemble and hang the FCE 3000, and the LED bars. There are a ton of diodes at the ends of the bars, and only a few in the middle. Let me get this fixture put together. The assembly process is simple and straightforward. I'll open up the hardware packs. It comes together with just thumb screws. I've laid the frame pieces out, and I'll place the LED bars diode side down and screw the thumb screws into the nuts set in the frame. The nuts will slide in the frame, allowing you to adjust the position of the bars. Mars prints arrows for their recommended position, and I'm following those. I'll slide these rubber corner protectors on on this side, and now I'll finish screwing in the bars on the other side, and add those bumpers. Now I'll add the eye bolts, which create hanging points. There are nuts set in the track to receive these, and they have their own arrow along the side for alignment. Now I'm going to plug the bars into the octopus cable. This cable allows the bars to be adjusted along the frame. You just push and twist. It's time to hang it up. It's in a 3x3 space, and you can see the FCE 3000 itself is about 2x2. Two I'll clip four ratchet pulleys into the eye bolts and hoist it up into position. I'll kill the room lights and turn on the FCE 3000. Let's check out the diodes. The Mars Hydro FCE 3000 has a total of 1,184 Bridge Lux diodes among four LED bars. With a published power draw of 300 watts, that breaks down to 3.95 diodes per watt or 0.25 watts per diode. They include 3000K and 5000K full spectrum diodes, along with 660 nanometer diodes and a few 730 nanometer far red and 380 nanometer UVA diodes. They declined to provide the quantity or power proportion of each type. The 730 nanometer IR diodes may give a slight boost to photosynthesis, but I think the UV diodes are not important. As growers, the light we care about most is in the EPAR range. We'll see how much the FCE 3000 produces in my tests. While we wait for the diodes to warm up, let's go check out the published stats. This is the product page for the FCE 3000 on MarsHydro.com. You can see the normal price is about $270, but they do run sales, and you can always use our discount code, CCFC. We can find the important stats in this graphic. They list it as a 300 watt grow light and they show a calculated PPE of 2.8 micromoles per joule. Let's run these data through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. I developed this tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It focuses on the important metrics and allows you to make better comparisons. In the calculator on the right, I load all the fixtures that I test. 
Let me pull up the data from the FC3000. The FC series features Samsung diodes and are more expensive than the FCE series. I tested the FC3000 about 18 months ago, shortly after it came out. It got superior efficiency and put out more than enough light for a 3x3 tent. If you use discount code CCFC on MarsHydro.com, the FC3000 will cost about $300. That's 49 cents per micromole. Over in the calculator on the left, I'll enter the data we got for the FCE3000. The power draw is listed at 300 watts. With the current sale, plus discount code CCFC, your cost is only about $243, and the calculated PPE was 2.8 micromoles per watt. The calculator thinks the FCE3000 is going to perform very similarly to the FC3000, but of course the cost is considerably lower. This would line up with the results I got from testing the FC and FCE6500 and the FC and FCE8000. In each case, the FCE version did as well or a little better. We'll see if the FCE3000 continues the pattern. It's time to run some tests. I use an Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor to set the hanging height and run the PAR tests. The FCE3000 hit a maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter at a height of only 32 centimeters, 12 and a half inches. This is a safe maximum PPFD for growers without supplemental carbon dioxide. The Apogee SQ500 sensor measures the PAR light from 400 to 700 nanometers. However, the latest research shows that far red light from 700 to 750 nanometers also contributes to photosynthesis. So after the PAR test, I run an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 sensor. The SQ610 EPAR sensor measures light from 400 to 750 nanometers. It includes all of the PAR light plus far red light. The FCE3000 has a few far red 730 nanometer diodes and the full spectrum diodes put out a small amount of far red light. An EPAR test is the best way to measure the growth potential of a fixture, but we'll check out the PAR map first. This PAR map checks all the boxes. The maximum PPFD is 1000 micromoles per square meter, and you can see the lowest corner is 514. 500 micromoles per square meter is a threshold for optimal growth, so it's good to keep the entire canopy above that level. There's a good distribution from top to bottom. Slightly less light falls along each side. In the EPAR test, the values go up everywhere. Here you can more clearly see the pattern to the distribution. There are great values everywhere, but the density is lowest along the sides that are perpendicular to the LED bars. Before I run the numbers, I want to compare the PAR map from this FCE3000 to the PAR map I made previously with the FC3000. The distribution looks better for the FC3000, and the corners are higher, but if you focus on this ring, the FCE3000 delivers more light. It's closer than it looks. You'll see that as we run the numbers on the FCE3000 PAR test. The PAR map and data from my prior test with the FC3000 are on the right. The FCE3000 on the left had a lower hanging height, only 32 centimeters, or 12 and a half inches but the maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter was the same in both tests. The FCE3000 delivered an average PPFD across the PAR map of 760.1 micromoles per square meter. So the distribution of light looks a little better for the FC3000, but the FCE3000 has a slightly higher average PPFD, and that translates to a slightly higher usable PPF. The FCE3000 delivered 615.7 micromoles, five more than the FC3000. And the FCE3000 had a lower power draw. It pulled only 284 watts from the wall, 11 less than the FC3000. So the FCE3000 clocked a photon efficiency of 2.17 micromoles per watt, which is notably better than the performance of the FC3000 in my previous test. When I tested the FC3000, I only had the Apogee SQ500 PAR sensor, so I didn't run an EPAR test with the FC3000. But you saw that I did just run one for the FCE3000. The values are higher in the EPAR test because it includes far red light. The maximum EPPFD was 1050 micromoles per square meter, and the average EPPFD 
went up to 808.7 micromoles per square meter. That converts to a usable ePPF of 655 micromoles, which means the Mars Hydro FCE 3000 delivered 39.3 micromoles of far red light. That's 6% of the total flux. The power draw stayed 284 watts, so the usable EPAR photon efficiency is impressive at 2.31 micromoles per watt. These are great test results. It's a great little light. I decided to see how it would perform at a slightly higher height. I raised it 10 centimeters, up to 42 centimeters, or 16 and a half inches. I think home growers often place too much emphasis on getting the lowest possible hanging height for the best light. There is a minimum hanging height, and you can certainly cause problems with too much light. But in a well-lit grow tent, you don't have to run the lights at the minimum height. Raising the fixture allows a more even distribution, and very little light is lost because of the reflective walls. I ran PAR and EPAR tests. Let's check out the maps. First, we have the PAR map with the 400 to 700 nanometer light. This is another great map. The PPFD values in the middle are lower at this height, but the values around the edge are higher. Let's look back at the PAR map from the lower hanging height. Here at 32 centimeters, the PPFD values in the center are above 900, but they drop to the low 500s in the corners. At the higher height, the maximum PPFD is only 870 micromoles per square meter, but the corners are up close to 600. In the EPAR test, the values all go up, so the corners rise above 600 at this height. Again, at the lower height, I measured more light in the middle and overall, but the distribution is not as even. I would prefer to grow my plants under the density produced at the higher, 42 centimeter height. The even distribution of light will likely lead to a higher overall yield. That's despite the fact that the higher height will lead to a slightly lower usable PPF. Let's run the numbers on the raised tests. The PAR map is on the left and the EPAR map is on the right. For both tests, the hanging height was 42 centimeters, about 16 and a half inches. The maximum PPFD at this height was 870 micromoles per square meter, and the maximum EPPFD was 913 micromoles per square meter. In the PAR test, I measured an average PPFD of 721.3 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable PPF of 584.3 micromoles. In the EPAR test, the average density was 761.8 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable EPPF of 617 micromoles. The power draw in both tests was 284 watts, which means at this height, the FCE3000 has a usable PAR photon efficiency of 2.06 and a usable EPAR photon efficiency of 2.17 micromoles per watt. Again, although the photon efficiency is slightly lower at this height, the photosynthetic efficiency is likely to be higher because of the superior distribution of light. If you want to review these maps and data more carefully, you can find them all in the test report in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Here are the main data for the Mars Hydro FCE 3000 from the official EPAR test. These are great top line numbers for a 3x3 grow light. We rate it for up to 10 square feet and predict you can harvest well over a pound. Here you can find shopping links in our discount code. For the best price, shop MarsHydro.com and use discount code CCFC. Your cost could be as low as $243. That's a cost efficiency of only 37 cents per micromole. These are all great numbers. The number I chose for the PAR Test Premier giveaway is the benchmark harvest potential in grams, 491. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Below the test data and the growth space calculator, you'll find my written review. For its price and performance, the Mars Hydro FCE 3000 is a top pick for 3x3 grow lights. It has excellent performance in terms of both efficiency and distribution, and the FCE series are some of the best priced fixtures on the market. The operating temperature for the Mars Hydro FCE 3000 are slightly warm, but within reason. The ambient temperature during the test was 25 degrees Celsius, 77 Fahrenheit. The LED bars had a high temperature of 56.9 degrees Celsius, 134.4 Fahrenheit, 
and the driver hit a high of 60.8 degrees Celsius, 141.4 Fahrenheit. I measure the operating temperature because it affects efficiency and longevity. However, operating temperature is not directly related to the amount of heat that a fixture adds to a grow space. The added heat in terms of BTU is a function of the power draw. The difference between different fixtures is not how much heat they create per watt, but rather how much light they create per watt. I also tested the dimmer. Mars Hydro fixtures come with a dimming control box that is mounted with the driver. The dimmers are continuous, which offers great adjustability, but it can be hard to know exactly how much power you're providing. In my dimming test with the FCE 3000, the setting was accurate at 25% and 50%, but at 75%, there was significantly more light and power than expected. I did not think that most growers need to get quantum sensors, but I do think that you would benefit from a power meter if you plan to accurately dim these fixtures. The FCE 3000 is another great fixture from Mars Hydro. It's ideal for a 3x3 grow tent. If you have more space, check out the FCE 4800, the FCE 6500, or the FCE 8000. You'll find my reviews for all of them and many other fixtures on my channel and in our grow light guide. At Coco for Cannabis, we always put the growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Sean at Mars Hydro for sending me the FCE 3000 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next PAR test premiere giveaway. Learn about all our grow light giveaways on the deals and discounts page at CocoforCannabis.com. While you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join our next grow challenge, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.